So we're here, and we're glad you're here. And uh, it's good to see all my friends from Mims. Can you believe it's it's February? We're, we're fixing to go to heaven. I mean Israel. <laughs> We're going to have a good time, good time. Well, let me lead us in a word of prayer, and then Brother Joe's going to give us some uh, updates, and uh, everybody's got their back table stuff there, so we'll get ready for that, and he'll explain all that to us as well. So glad you're here. Let's bow together. I know there are needs, and before we pray, I know there are needs in each of our families. As a matter of fact, just to update you, I'm having surgery on my left eye this coming Friday morning at 9 o'clock. Because on the 27th of November, they took the lens out of my left eye that was dislodged, which means it was just messed up. And now I don't have a lens in there. So that means, you know, we have a lens on the end of your camera. It doesn't focus. So if I close this eye, I see you, but you're just a big blob. <laughs> and I can't wait till uh, Friday. Yeah, don't close that eye. Don't close that eye. I'm kind of a blob already. So... If, I know if you have a need, would you raise your hand? All right, well, let's pray together. Father, we just pause to tell you we love you, and we're thankful for the opportunity of fellowship one with another because of our fellowship with you. We thank you for each of these who have gathered tonight and uh, for the desire you've placed upon their heart to view uh, Israel, the land where our Savior walked. Father, my heart is rejoicing for the opportunity to do the same. Thank you for your safe traveling mercies for us even tonight. And Father, as uh, we just pause, we know that you're the giver of life and, Lord, you're the sustainer of life. And so thank you for the grace for every day. Thank you for the grace that uh, we face in the uncertainty of circumstances and situations. We know you're still in control. Thank you for Joe and Kathy and for their uh, heart for you and for, uh, just for loving you and serving you as well. I pray that you'd bless our time together tonight. Help us to have good dialogue and uh, answer questions. And Lord, just uh, prepare our hearts for the days ahead. We'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Brother Joe Arms. Amen. I'm so excited about Denny coming on this trip. I can barely stand myself. And I really am thrilled that he's come to be a part of it. And uh, you're going to be blessed by his presence uh, as well. And some of you have been to a part of the, his MIMS journey. Know that already. Amen. Uh, we have a lot of folks come from all over creation, just about. Uh, if we have folks from MIMS. We have folks from our church. Uh, we have uh, my daughter back on the back row by her mama back there. And her husband, Todd and Cherish, they'll be on the trip. And uh, last year, we took one, two, three, about six or eight of us in this room. We're on the trip last year. So let me warn you, you get a bad case of uh, Jerusalem syndrome, they call it. You just got to go back. So I'm just warning you now, all right, just, that it happens that way. Gary, did we get a form handed out to folks? Already handed out? You're going to hand them out now. I'm going to have Gary hand you out these uh, a basic form per couple, per person. If you're not a couple, grab one. It's uh, several sheets front and back. To kind of go over some things we'll talk about tonight. The key things I'll bring out uh, and important things we'll, we'll share about uh, transfers and stuff. I want to talk about those. And then some of the stuff we've covered already. And um, you may have questions about it again because that was a long time ago. How many were at the last meeting we did? That, that was last year, wasn't it? <laughs> Who knows when it was? So if you're like me, you're going to need reminding. All right. So we try to, re to put down the pertinent facts in there for answering questions later as well. Uh, we'll send this information out to those who aren't here tonight. We'll look at the tags back there. If you've got somebody that makes sure we need to get it to, you can send me an email or Stacy an email and just say, hey, send it to so-and-so for sure. Make sure they get that form you passed out. It's not asking you for information. It's just basically giving you a bunch of information. And so say so you're sitting there reading through the whole thing. Let me just kind of go through it with you. One thing I'm most concerned about as we go, we have one real tight connection, you know, and when we when we... We'll meet at Terminal D, and I want everybody, if you can be there no later than 2.15, I'll be there by about 2 o'clock or a little sooner probably and catch you as you come in. You'll see me standing out there, but Brother Danny, we'll, we'll catch you as we come in. I'll probably have at least one or two little things in my hand where I can weigh your luggage before they make you switch it all around. So uh, 
because if you weigh it and it's a little bit over, they'll charge you for it, so you, well, you can switch stuff between bags. Uh, if you don't have a bag measure, the easy way, if you, have a, if you have a weight thing at home, you know, that you take your weight on, you can hold your bag in your hand and, and subtract your real weight. <laughs> you get a carry-on. The dimensions of carry Yeah. I don't think they've ever weighed to carry on a British Airways. They didn't weigh anything for you guys last year, did they? Huh? So uh, you think we need to put it in there. Just act like it's light, all right? Act like it's featherweight. But I've never had them weigh that. They just want to make sure the dimensions are right on it. I've never really had them take it aside and measure it even. But if it looks obvious, they may want you to check it at the gate. But uh, we, won't, we won't have a problem there. British Airways is pretty good uh, with handling people. They're, they're just courteous. Uh, I've been flat flown with a lot of different airlines, and they're some of the better ones. Uh, Air France can get a little snooty. United can get a little snooty, you know. Uh, there are some airlines that just, for whatever reason, they, the training is not as well done as it's like the old Continental days were, you know. But anyway, uh, we've always had really good time. British Airways even works with us. We do mission trips by giving us missionary fares and things like that. So they're just a, they're, they're a good corporation. They, they, they treat their customers very well. But when we do get there, we'll make sure everybody's checked in, and we'll just let you go through the line. They'll check you in. Uh, I'll check you off my list to make sure you're there. <laughs> And then just go get checked in after that. But let me greet you first, meet you first, and put you in the line and get you going that way. But they're pretty, pretty good about working with us. If they're not checking at that time, and sometimes they won't start until about 30 minutes after we get there, but at least we get you in the lines and get you ready to go. You just go up and wait till the flights are called. You can go up there and have lunch. If you hadn't eaten yet, you'll have time to do that. And there's several restaurants in Terminal D, if you're familiar with it or not. I don't know. But it's, you know, it's a lot of changes over the last few years there. So there's several restaurants. The concern is that once we get on the... Uh, get into London is there is a very short hour, 10, hour and 15 minute turnaround time. Uh, last year, it was a real trip uh, because they had us not only at a very busy time when we came in, so many other airlines were getting there, and it was just massive people, and it, it was crazy. It's not always like that. I hope it's not like that this year, but the deal is you have the information of where your next flight number is. And so as we get off the plane, we just try to stick with the group, but if somehow you get lagged behind, don't freak out. Just follow the signs because British Airways and Heathrow will take you through another security check, just like you went through at Houston, like TSA. They have their own. And so before you can get into the rest of the airport, they'll do it. But that's for your safety. So sometimes the lines are long. Sometimes you'll have time. Nobody's going to leave you. When you're with a group, they always wait. You know, and they'll give you another 20, 30 minutes sometimes with a group. So uh, we'll make sure that you get on the plane. But just, it is a tight turnaround. Last year, they had us in land in Terminal 5 and go to Terminal 2, which meant you had to get through all that custom stuff, make your way down several flights of stairs, find the little subway train or whatever it is, and hopefully go to the right place. So we're all skirmish, squirming and getting there fast as we can. Everything's in Terminal 5 this time, all right? So it's a matter of going down, go through security. You'll see that there'll be signs posted everywhere what the flights are. The way British Airways does it, is uh, if the flight's not ready to board, which it should be that time, but if it's not ready to board, they make you wait in the guest lounge and they announce the gates. So it's a big terminal area with guests. and So just wait for it there, but you'll see most of us gathering around. So I have also will have my phone on regular sale mode, all right? So if you get in trouble, just call my cell phone. The contact number will be on that piece of paper. You might want to put it in your cell phone just in case. I'm lost, you know, and let me know, so, and I'll let the gate know they're coming. So. I'll be looking for you anyway, counting you off the list that I have. So we're going to do everything we can to get you there. Like, uh, like I say, several people have gone. I'll have them working with me to make some of the front line, back line. Is there an assumption that our cell phones will work over there? Yes. And what I would do, and that's something I'll talk about in a minute, is just making sure your carrier, you know, if you don't want to pay for it, I think AT&T, if you have them, is like $10 a day if you use it. But you have to get this plan. You can use it unlimited that day. So make all your calls, check your mail, whatever you want to do and do it that way. So uh, Verizon, I don't think they have a similar plan as that, but you just have to call your carrier and say, I'm going to be in Israel. And I do that with my credit cards as well. So I'm going to be out of town, and they tell them what countries you're going to be in, and they'll mark your file because you don't want over there to be buying something and they turn it down. What do you know about Sprint? Uh, Sprint? No, I don't know. But I'm sure they do. Everybody has an international plan. So it shouldn't be a problem. But what I would encourage you to do while we're talking about is download an application, an app called WhatsApp. WhatsApp, is, if, everybody, if your friends have WhatsApp, then you can talk with no charge as long as you have internet. You have WhatsApp. Yeah, I have it too, so I'll give you that information as well. But if you have WhatsApp, I can send you my info and just let me know. And we'll, we can do it at the airport even, just say, hey, put me in your WhatsApp. And that works on everybody's phones. That's, I did. If you have WhatsApp, you can use your phone unlimited on the internet. 
All right, but you have to get the app. So whenever you get the internet, you can open up your WhatsApp and make your calls from there. And you can do, I think, video calls as well as audio calls of WhatsApp. It's calling, texting, I think even FaceTiming. A Wi-Fi, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you make sure you're on the internet. WhatsApp, I don't think, it only hooks to Wi-Fi, I think. It's an internet app. So, but anyway, uh, I'll have my phone available with WhatsApp and also an AT&T. So if anyone wants to call me, they can do it. It'd be like a long-distance call. Right. Right. So, so give it to your family. Make sure they've got it. And they have to answer it, too, all right? So it doesn't do any good if they want to answer it. What is that? You know, it's a WhatsApp, phone call. But the big deal is just that first connection. After that, there's not a big problem. We'll have time between connections and stuff to get on board and take care of stuff. But it's that first one when, when we leave, you know, arrive right at 6.55 in the morning and you have 8.05, so that's not a whole lot of time, all right? Uh, British Airways is clean. The food is decent. Service is, is, is very nice and personal. They take care of you even in the, even in the, even the economy seat, so they're, they're good to their customers and stuff. So, All right. Luggage allowances are also in there, so check your luggage. Since they mostly go by uh, the metric system, they say it's 51 pounds per bag instead of 50 pounds per bag because that's more in line with the kilograms and everything. But I tried to communicate it in pounds and, and inches all right, and, and break it down for you. If you have medicines, blood pressure pills, stuff like that, don't put it in your baggage. Keep it on your carry-on or in your purse or whatever carry-on bag you have, just in case a luggage might get lost. All right, so uh, it's always best to have that thing. So always keep that and at least a pair of personal items, <laughs> you know, those kind of things, in the carry-on just in case that ever happens. And we've been to Israel, I don't know how many times, countless times, uh, 25, 20 times, and only one time we ever lost our luggage. And I think I'm the only one that ever lost their luggage in all the trips I took. And they lost it. I mean, I didn't get it until I got home. So. But they paid for me going out and buying new clothes and stuff like that. So it was kind of a blessing. You know? <laughs> so, new shoes, new clothes, it's all all right with me. So there's always a blessing, even the difficult times. That's just called being a Christian, amen? You, you're going to make through. Passports is the thing I had up there, but not forgetting, making sure you, you know, some, don't leave home without it. I mean, that's, that's, that's an important issue that you uh, this is just quit working on me again. Karen, can you advance this? There we go. Never mind. It's, it's decided to start working. You know, don't forget your passports. Make sure you got it. Men, I encourage you, carry your passports in your front pockets if you're going to put them on your person. Uh, when I'm out in Jerusalem or Israel or anywhere else, I leave them in the room, in the little room safes, you know, that they have in the rooms. I just lock them in there. Uh, you won't need them most of the time. Uh, when we check in the hotels, uh, they... They won't even ask you for them because you're with the group, and then we give them all that information. Every once in a while, there's a time where passports have to be collected, but uh, since we're not going through any Jordanian or Egyptian borders on this trip or anything like that, I don't think that'll be a necessity, but going and traveling, make sure that you have them, all right, and, and you have them on you. The luggage tags, there's two that, I, that I've handed you. Uh, I've already lost mine. <laughs> all right, these are pretty simple. You just loop it through the loop, wrap it around the handle, and we have these matching lug tags. One, because when we get to an airport, some of our men will just be good about getting everybody's bags off together. Just make sure yours is in the, in the stack, all right? Make sure you got it. And it also helps us not only to identify them at the airport because they're all the same color and the same look. It also helps when you're in the hotel. We will probably be one of maybe four or five groups in a hotel at a time. And so we put our bags out the day we're leaving for the next hotel. They're pretty clear what group they belong to just by looking at the colors and stuff. So they're colored, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's attention getting and it takes care of it. If you'll look at it, make sure your address and your phone number is correct on it in case it gets lost. If it's not, let my wife know at the end of the time. I think one or two have already been saying that wasn't correct. It might be that when using Excel, if I get near it, I mess it up. So... They try not to let me near Excel. <laughs> so, I think most of the information is correct. One or two might be wrong, but just check it for your own personal well-being. Uh, converters, if you don't have one, get one. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart, anywhere. But basically, just make sure it's got, it'll tell you what countries it's good for. You're looking for something good for Israel. It is a 220 circuit over there, so you don't want to blow everything out. Uh, things like laptops and stuff like that. Uh, most of them have a 220 adapter in them, but I would still use the converter anyway. The new converters, you buy one, like I bought one on Amazon last year, $18, $19, but it had two USB ports for charging phones and stuff in it as well as the plugs and stuff. The bathrooms will have enough plugs for the razors or whatever if you're charging stuff in the bathroom. There's a hair dryer in every hotel, so you don't need to take a hair dryer. 
The hotels you'll really be pleased with, and we'll talk about them in a moment. The attire, the obvious things that we've talked about. If you're a kind of person who doesn't like to pack a lot of stuff, you want the hotel to do your laundry, uh, that works. But just remember, hotel laundry is always expensive. You know, it's like $5 a shirt, $5 a pair of jeans. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm not a guy who likes to take a lot of stuff. So every once in a while, I minimize and let the hotel, at least on one trip, maybe usually the first last night, and night before last in Jerusalem, I'll have them wash a couple things for me. But there's sinks. You can wash out socks and that kind of stuff and underclothes. But... If you're leaving the next day, you might, and you washed it that night, you might bring a little plastic bag to put it in case it didn't dry good overnight so you can put it out the next hotel you're at. Uh, you're going to find that the hotels pretty much have everything you need. The time that you would probably need a sweater or a light jacket would be in Jerusalem because you're in the mountains. All right? The rest of the time when you get down into the Dead Sea and stuff like that, it, you're not going to need it down there at that time of year. This time of the year, you're going, to, you're going to the very best time of the year to take a trip like this. It is, the most, it is the most beautiful time of the year in Israel. And it, it, if you hit it right, and after a rainy, early rain season, and you can hit the Judean desert right, even that's mind-blowing, you know, when we get down to the Dead Sea and stuff. So uh, that's always a, a fun time. We've talked about money. They love American dollars. You don't need to convert unless you just want to get some shekels, you know. Uh, right now, the new Israeli shekel, I looked at the other day, what was around 3.6 something to the dollar? But, you know, if you, if you get them changed, you know, find a place on the street instead of the, the bank hotel. It'll always be a little higher there, you know. To, there's, there's a lot of currency exchange places in the Middle East, especially in Israel. But uh, they love credit cards. Your credit cards should work. But I say the safest thing to do is tell your credit card company you're going out of country. Because uh, my credit card, if you, I travel a lot. And if I didn't tell them before I left, they, I'll be checking out the hotel and deny the charge. Like, oh, great. So you got to, you know, they'll usually send me an email or something if I wait for it, but then I've got to go through the process and then it comes through. So I've tried to always remember whenever I'm leaving, call the card company that I'm going to use. It wouldn't hurt even to check with your card company. If you have multiple credit cards, find the one that doesn't charge you a currency exchange rate. All right? Uh, Capital One doesn't charge a currency exchange rate. Uh, some do, some don't. American Express will because they like to charge everything higher anyway. All right, so uh, that's, that's an important deal. Again, back to the smartphones. Just check with your smartphone providers of what you, what, anything you want to do. But I would, you know, if you're tech savvy enough to download an app, then download the WhatsApp and use that. You'll enjoy the fact that the Internet is everywhere you go and it's not going to charge you for it. The best thing about this trip you're going to love is something nobody told me till the fourth day we were in Israel. We use a luxury bus, and those who've been to what I'm talking about, it's a very nice and a very comfortable bus with giant tall windows, air-conditioned. It's just it's really a nice coach to ride in. It's very comfortable. It's not springing up and down like some of the, the others are. But it also has the Internet on it. All right, and no charge, so, you know, you can text or make a phone call on the bus if you want to or check on somebody if you need to. Just remember there's a time change of about eight hours. Uh, when does daylight savings time start? I don't think Israel does it. But it starts, will we be in daylight saving times about that time of year? So just remember that. Just figure out the time change because your family might not appreciate you calling at 2 o'clock in the morning, even though it might be 10.30 for you, you know, or 8, 9.30 in the morning. So check the time factors when you make your calls. I'm sure they will appreciate it more. But uh, the Internet, like I said, it's, it's everywhere you go now, and the bus does have it. So if you have to check with the office or call somebody or check on something, you can use that internet service, and it's and once in a, I think once or twice it's spotty, but most of the time it's right on, you know. And uh, even when half the people on the bus were on it, it was still it wasn't the fastest lightning or anything, but it, it got the job done. All right. Uh, the only thing not covered again in the basic cost here is, is the lunch issues. We go to lunch at different places. Uh, most of them are cafeteria style. There we go to lunch. Some people don't pay attention to the menu. When you go in there, it says you get stuff this big a plate, it costs this much. This big a plate costs this much. They just go in and see the food and start putting it on the plate. And they go, the guy says, that'll be $18. What? You know, <laughs> pay attention to what you're getting. You know, and what you're eating. You'll find out you're not real hungry at lunch, except on the days we did a lot of walking, because we eat such a big breakfast. If you go down and have breakfast, the food's going to be amazing. All right? The only reason you won't put on 30 pounds on this trip is because you're walking a lot. Or you would. And because the food, and those who've been will testify that the food in these different hotels is, is, is phenomenal. It's ex excellent food. You know, it's, it's gourmet qualities in, in some place. 
the Dan Panorama in Israel, they have these giant buffets at every meal for breakfast. They have people cooking omelets as well and all that. And then, uh, so the, the, the quality of where you're going, these are really super nice places to go, super nice places to stay. But the food will be something you really, really enjoy. We get to the Israel tale down on the Dead Sea. You're going to think you died and went to heaven. <laughs> food there is just another, you know, it's another step up. It's that good. And so uh, my problem is that hotel is we only stay one night. I did try to get us another night there, <laughs> but they only gave us one night. It was booked up for the following nights, but uh, it's a great place to stay. We'll have time there, as we said. And I'll show you the hotel list again in a moment. Did you get the list on their email about the Esprit Spa? If you checked your email, this last email I sent out, if you didn't get one, I've got several here. You can grab one here. It, this is like a 12-page deal. The Esprit Spa is in the Israel, Israel Tel Hotel, and... Uh, we give those out now because it was one of the busiest spa hotels on the Dead Sea. People come from all over the world there for the treatments and the facials and all those kind of things and the massages and the, you know. Or you can just go down to the free and get in the Dead Sea and soak, all right? Gary, I think he's down there reading books, you know, and sitting in the water. You just float, you know. You can't drown unless you put your face down in it. That's an experience in itself, all right? You'll get off and feel a little slimy, but you go take a shower. But a uh, big group goes down and just gets in. Or you can go to the spa pay the $100, whatever you want to do. But it's available, but I'll need for you to turn to me whatever treatment you're wanting here probably pretty soon so we can book it in advance. Because if we're late to the last minute to book it, they won't, you won't get in. So we tell them the day we're arriving. We'll arrive at that hotel around 2 in the afternoon, and they'll, we usually make those things there. So if you just want to treat yourself something special, look through that 12-page list of stuff. The prices are in NIS, which means the new Israeli shekel, and in dollars. All right? They not take credit cards there. Okay? But uh, I was going to do the facial scrub, but Kathy told me it wouldn't help a thing for me, so I just blew it off. <laughs> Amen? So travel pillows and all these other kind of things, travel insurance, you had to get it. may be too late to get travel insurance. I'm not sure. I think there's 30 days out from a trip. I'm not, but you could check on it if you haven't checked on it just to be... If, you, if you're interested in getting some coverage on that. Uh, travel pillows, something you can get anywhere. You can't have mine. But uh, I love you, but you can't have it. <laughs> We're flying Houston to Tel Aviv is the way this works. We'll drive from Tel Aviv. We'll be met by our, we'll be met by our guide at the airport, and our bus driver will load everything up. Uh, when you get on the bus, find wherever you want to accept the first seat on the left when you get in. That's my seat. I have to be there to work with the guide and take care and talk to the driver and tell him not to run over anybody or get us in an accident. Slow down. That's my responsibility. <laughs> so we'll, we'll bust to, to Jerusalem. We'll have the same people working with us the whole trip. You'll love these people. I've talked about our guide before, Susan Marcus. She's, uh, for those who've been, she's one of the greatest. Who showed me a picture? Their daughter just was there in Israel. Is that you? Last year, we, took, we went and took Susan Marcus uh, uh, an Astros World Series shirt. It was the year before last. And so uh, she showed me a picture, and her daughter had Susan Marcus for a guide, and she was wearing the Astro shirt, so good for her. And even when we're not there, she's standing strong. So <laughs> she's a Boston girl, so that's a good deal. She'd been living in Israel since the early 70s, though, her and her family. So good folks, good people. You'll love them. Great guide. Uh, doesn't have that strong city Jewish accent. She's over the Boston accent, so you'll understand her clearly. <laughs> All right. The Dead Sea, from there one night, we'll visit Masada and some places like that. I'll talk about it in a moment. T Tiberius, right on the Sea of Galilee. Beautiful hotel. It's probably, of all the hotels we stay at, it's the same star rating, but Tiberius is not known for the best hotels in the world. So it's the top class for Tiberius, all right? And you'll enjoy it, though. The food's great there, and it's, very, it's a little cozier hotel than the others, but it's a beautiful setting. I mean, sunrise... You get up for sunrise, it'll just blow your mind. Sunrise coming up over the Sea of Galilee just from your room. It's, it's unbelievable time just in the Lord. So again, we, March 28th is our arrival date there once we get there. And depending on when we get there, one thing we like to do is take people down to the Western Wall and just have a welcoming kind of thing that happens right there. You'll be so tired, you'll probably won't want to do it, but we'll make you do it anyway. Unless there's no time. You know, and if, if we get in late, like last time, we, we did meet a certain season when just a lot of tourists were there, and we had long waiting lines to get through the airport. So it took us about 
a long time, so we didn't get to go down the wall. But we'll get in time to the hotel, time to get cleaned up, relax a little bit, and then time for dinner that evening. Uh, we won't have meetings every night. We'll have meetings here or there when we talk, because we're meeting all day long, you know, just going different places. But we also want you to be rested. Early years, when I was a much younger man, we had meetings every night. I think everybody hated me. So we, we got over that. And uh, we try to let you be rested because there a, there's a lot of going and stuff. But there's a lot of rest times as well. And we don't try to push you or press you, but we'll let you know when it's time to get on the bus. What time do you have to leave the morning? Uh, we'll let you know each day. But it's usually around 8 8 to 8.30, ish, depending on what we're going to do that day and what we, who we want to beat out that day. So by 8 or 8.30, we're hitting the bus and heading out. Uh, Jerusalem traffic is crazy these days. You think Houston's bad because it just keeps growing and they keep expanding. And so, but it's a, it's a great time there. We'll go through customs. Uh, Susan meets the group for transfers. Our time in Jerusalem is just going to be incredible. We'll, you'll be at, that's the upper room on the left corner. We'll visit the Church of All Nations down there in the Garden of Gethsemane. The church is there. That's the Garden of Gethsemane on your far right. One thing that's very special, we kind of got broke up this last trip. We had to go back to the next day because there were people. There's a special area in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane that Susan has a pretty good special relationship with the priests that work at that church. And so uh, we have a, they let us kind of go into that area and have a special meeting, just a time to pray. And we'll take, com- you know, if not communion there, we'll take it at the, the garden tomb, but one of those places we'll do communion. But it's a good time just to settle back and just say, hey, here we are, Lord. Take this time and bless it and give us what we need to get and speak to our hearts and minds and lives and use this time for yourself and us. So Big deal is a group here. We want to always be flexible, but there's a lot to see in Jerusalem. For several days that we're there, we'll be seeing a lot of different things. The southern stairwells, the picture on my right, is one of the most awesome places you'll, you'll visit. At least to me, it's one of my favorites. Those are the same stairs that people have gone up for centuries. Back in the Old Testament, they went up at those stairs. When Herod rebuilt the temple, the steps were still the same steps going up to the temple that people go to take their sacrifices up. There are a few baptismal pools down at the bottom of that, that thing. I think one of the first years we did that and they finished the excavation chairs was the last time you were there and you were, what, 17? 20. You? <laughs> so it's, it, they just uncovered them, but it, it is still one of the most phenomenal places, you know, the moving places to, to just think about all the people who've come up those steps. And that's Jesus spoke from these steps of the Southern Temple. And those baptismal pools were most likely were on the day of Pentecost, all those people were baptized. So the day of Pentecost, you know, pretty much was, this is the spot for Peter standing and preaching to the masses that were gathered there for, 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 for that, the, the Passover and things. So we'll stand there. The bottom picture on the right is a model of the, the city of Jerusalem as it was in the days of Jesus. And they built this city in East Jerusalem. It took them years. Stone by stone, they chiseled out and built this thing. It's phenomenal uh, replicate of, the, of what it was like during the time of Jesus, from the walls to, to the, where everything is stationed. So we'll go kind of the latter part of our time in Jerusalem, kind of look at it from that perspective so you kind of see it as well. And we'll walk around it. That thing was moved because of all the tension in East Jerusalem and all that was happening there. That was picked up and moved to the west side of Jerusalem. It was taken apart by I don't know how many technicians and people were involved, but they took it apart stone by stone again and rebuilt it just as it was on the other side of town. It took years to rebuild. So it's a, it's a feat in itself. We'll see the Dead Sea Scrolls. We'll, there's just a lot we'll see in Jerusalem that... You just don't have time in one night to go over all the different things. But it's, it's quite an experience there. Obviously, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite places is the Garden Tomb. And one of my favorite places to receive the Lord's Supper as well. The first day in Jerusalem, we'll get on our bus and we'll head up to the Mount of Olives. And if you're in good, decent walking shape, it's a downhill trod. We'll walk down the Mount of Olives. If you don't feel like you can make the walk, then we'll put you on the bus and he'll drive you down. We'll meet down at the Garden of Gethsemane. It, but we're just, it's, it's, it's that pretty much a, the location of where the triumphal entry of Jesus would have been on those last days. So we'll walk down that, get a view of the, of the city, and uh, it's breathtaking, panoramic view of the city. So it's a great, great time of the Lord as well. Uh, on to the Judean desert, the Dead Sea. It's going to be a great experience. We'll visit Masada and some of those locations that are there. Uh, last year, I encouraged some people to go back and look on YouTube or Netflix or whatever they got. And, Look at the movie uh, Masada. Y'all remember that movie years and years ago that came out? Peter O'Toole was in it. I'm really showing my age. All right. <laughs> if you haven't seen Masada, you ought to just bring it up. You said you can find it on YouTube, right? Pull it up on YouTube and watch it. It was a mini series on TV back in the 60s or 70s. 
But it's, it's it kind of give you a history, and it's Hollywood's version. But it'll give you a history of what Masada was really like, so it's worth, it's worth watching. And then you'll visit Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. There's plenty to see in that particular region. And it's on, after we spend the night in the, at the Israel Tel Hotel, on to the Sea of Galilee. Uh, depending on what's going on, what it's like, you will either take a boat ride out on the Sea of Galilee, have a time of, 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 out there on the Sea of Galilee, Things are good. We might take a boat ride across. It depends on what's happening and where the other tour groups are. There's just a lot of stuff. We try to work it where we're not standing in lines. You know, appreciate that, right? <laughs> so I'm not big on lines, but there'll be a lot to see in, in those particular areas. Uh, the Mount of Beatitudes, the church on the left. So there's just in that whole arena there. Of course, Sea Galilee is very calm on that particular day. Uh, we'll make our way to the Jordan River for those who want to be baptized. That cost is nothing, but you may want to rent a robe. <laughs> you know, uh, at this place, they'll let you baptize there, but there's an entry fee. If you're not going to be baptized, there's no entry fee. You can come in and just sit in, some, in a little arena place and watch people being baptized. But we baptized there. We had a, I don't know, we baptized 40-something people the last time we were there. It was just a fun day, an exciting time. We'll stop there. There's, there's, with the robe, you get a place to go change. There's showers, you know, and, and place to put your stuff and your clothes while you go get baptized. And so uh, it's all pretty safe and all pretty clean, all pretty decent. But it's always a great service when we do that there. Uh, later on, we'll make our way up to the Mediterranean and visit the Caesarea. Philip, Caesarea. From there, we'll make our way up to the... This is on top of Mount Carmel here where that particular building is. But we're going to be in bottom pictures as another in route kind of thing. It's a Roman aqueduct from the times of the Romans when they ruled the country. There's just going to be so many things that you'll take in. You'll you almost feel like you're missing it. It's so fast. So I encourage you to be reading your Bible. You know, read the, especially the New Testament. Go through the Gospels again. Read the scriptures and then look at the itinerary and maybe look up some of the, the scriptures that we're talking about sharing in different places at different times. And there'll be a, if you've never been, what's going to happen is all of a sudden the pieces are going to come together. All right. It's just like, oh, it makes sense. You know, uh, I've been reading the Bible a long time and I wonder where the Sea of Tiberias, nobody told me it's the same as the Sea of Galilee, you know, or the Sea of Gennesaret. That's the Sea of Galilee too. You, it all comes together. You just see very clearly things you've just kind of read over. But now with the, we think in word pictures. So now the word pictures are coming correctly. And it is, a, it is a very stirring experience to have that experience. The Dan Panorama is in the heart of Jerusalem, in the newer parts of Jerusalem. We're not too far from Ben Yehuda Street. There's a lot of shopping down there. There's a Turkish train station. The old Turkish train station is around the corner, down a few, a few blocks. You can walk to that. That's a big marketplace now, and restaurants are down there. So if you want to go down there one evening, and there's outdoor musicians playing and things like that, you can stroll down there. It's perfectly safe to do that. And if you don't want to stroll, a cab's not very much to take over there as well, and there's always cabs at the hotel for those kind of things. Dan the Panorama's four nights there. Israel Hotel, the Dead Sea. Beautiful hotel, beautiful rooms, great service, great people. You can go out and float in the Dead Sea, or like I said, you can go to the spa, or you can go take a nap, okay? <laughs> Nobody's going to tell you what to do in those times. Just enjoy it. Then to the Sea of Galilee, where that hotel's right on the water, and it's just a beautiful location. You'll enjoy that as well. And then from the Galilee, two nights uh, there. Then we're uh, two nights in Tel Aviv. Our last trip, we had one night in Tel Aviv. We looked at this trip, and it was either one night in London or one night extra in Israel. Uh, one night in London would probably have been a hotel out by the airport and that kind of thing. I figured we'd rather just kind of do Tel Aviv. You can go stroll on the beach. There's tons of shops near the hotel we're staying at. You can go down there and stroll the shops. Or Jaffa, the ancient Jaffa city of Jaffa, is just a short cab right of way. There's, there, there's a lot to do if you want to look up to say, hey, I got a free day in Tel Aviv. Look online, check the internet out, see if there's some sites you'd like to see and be a part of. So you'll have that free time. There'll be a half a day also in Jerusalem. You'll have free. You say, I wanted to go here. We didn't go there. You know, feel free to get. I would not. <clears throat> Well, I think, yeah, I would too. In Jerusalem, I don't have any trouble with cabs. I'm always a little uh, in some places, but cabs are not a problem. Uh, if there's a problem, everybody's always heard about Israel problems, problems, problems. If there's usually a problem, it's somewhere usually in Tel Aviv or Haifa, and it's usually a bus. So don't get on any buses except our bus. <laughs> All right? Just grab a cab. It's not as cheap as a bus, you know, but it's just worth the the extra expense just to take a cab somewhere and deal with it. You'll, you'll find the people very courteous and very understanding, and most people are not seeking to, to rip you off of what's going on. Uh, 
But come expecting the Lord to do great things. That ancient Capernaum where I'm standing in front of the group, our last group, right there. They'll probably give you a free hat of some color they can always spot. And it might be white, might be blue, might be white. But it's an Israeli tour company hat that we work with international tourism. But uh, that picture down at the bottom, that's Susan between my wife and I. And that is really one of the sites that, you know, every year I go, and every time I've been, they always take, Susan's real good about taking me to someplace new that had been, or some recent archaeological dig. So it'll be a part of some of the new stuff as well. But this is, in the recent, from the last few years, this is the ancient city gates that Abraham went through when he entered in to the land of Canaan, you know. Uh, this, this is where he came in at. And they have unearthed these, and they, in fact, they're trying to protect them. They have this big, massive roof over the whole section now just to keep it from deteriorating now it's been unearthed so to know that you're standing the very gate you know that abraham and sarah walked through just mind-blowing to me amen so those are things that you'll see and be a part of hotels are great the people are great the time you're going to spend with these people uh, i've checked all your criminal history you all passed really well so <laughs> there is a basic itinerary as part of that list that you can go through and see a little bit more information all right now, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would say wear them any day but your Jerusalem days. Do you think capris are a problem in Jerusalem? It's the holy sites. That's where they usually give you, you know, some of the Catholic sites are, are real fussy about it. And some of the areas we get around Muslim things, they're fussy. I mean, a guy like to tap on me and my wife because I was holding hands with her one day, you know. Unclean, unclean, you go wash, you go wash. I don't know if she's talking about me or Kathy, but it was unclean, whatever it was. We almost had a, an, uh, an incident internationally, but I, I settled down. <laughs> what is the weather like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's real similar to Houston weather, really. I mean, uh, you're going to see temperatures in the 60s and 70s this time of year. Rain, uh, rain most of the rainy season has ended. Uh, I tell people, I might take a little light park or a hoodie or just a, one of those little easy umbrellas up. We don't hit a lot of rain. February, November, November to February hit most of the rain. So most of the rainy season is gone at that time of the year. Uh, you'll be not, should be nice sunny weather. But if it's a shower, it's usually just a passing quick little spring shower or something. Uh, I would take, like I say, a, 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 a nice little jacket. It have to be a real heavy one because there are cool nights in Jerusalem just because you're in the mountains. So, but uh, most of the time, you know, it's, it's the sleeveless and the shorts they don't like for women. Yes, yes. Is that somewhere close to the hotel where you can camp out? Yeah, you're not too far from there. We'll probably go through, we'll probably see that the tomb of David and some of those areas. So you'll see a lot of that stuff as we go in Jerusalem. But what we don't see, you can look back up and... Yeah, you have to watch the museum hours, too. They might even be open. And there's like a Friday afternoon, they're going to close early, those kind of things like this. You have to look at the schedules. And most of that stuff's online. You can look at it. I'll try to... Uh, and once we get there and you got something like that, Susan will know right off. She'll be able to. <laughs> well, that's easy. You go to HEB and buy that Sabra stuff. <laughs> that's the way I make hummus. We'll get you some hummus. We'll get you good hummus. We'll stop one day at a falafel stand. Some of you will think it's awful. Some of you will think it's the best thing since sliced cheese. I haven't seen anybody any problem, you, you know, with any interactions of anything. No, as far as medicine to bring with you. No. I mean, should, should you have a list of what, what, what you buy? I would just, for my own sake, I'd keep a list personally in case something got lost, you know, keep that list. But I've never had a problem with customs or anything like that saying, what are you carrying here? You know, if it's in a prescription bottle, I know a lot of people like to break it down to the little daily things. If you do that, at least bring the bottle. Well, you have some yeah, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> you don't do that without sharing with a group. No. <laughs> it's 220 there, so get a converter from like Walmart or on. Just look for a converter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they'll have hair dryers there, but if you're using hair stuff, like Kathy uses those kind of things, but. Uh, we use it, just get a converter and you plug it right into that and it plugs right into their plug, just make it an Israel, Israeli, Israel type conversion. A lot of them say, a lot of things you have at home do say it's key point. Yeah, it's yeah. Key it's just getting that matching plug though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to have the matching plug and that'll come with a converter too. 
an adapter. Most of the time, uh, like I say, uh, I take one converter. That's usually enough for us as a, as, a, as a family and like the hotels, the hair dryers and stuff. And there is, a lot of times there is a 110 plug in the hotel in the bathroom. It's just not a lot of wattage. So when do the activities end? We're usually back to the hotel. We, we, do, we do the breakfast, head out, have lunch somewhere together. Uh, by the way, that lunch sometimes, like in Jerusalem one day, we'll just be now by the Western Wall and we'll go up to where the, the old Jewish quarter is in there and there's tons of little side, side, sidewalk restaurants and stuff. We say, you like pizza, go there. If you want this, go there. If you want falafel, go there. If you want, you know, if you like fish, go there. Because they're all right there together. And so everybody just gets something to eat and we'll all meet at a certain location. And so we'll give you that kind of time. But in the evening, we're usually, it could be anywhere from three to five, we're back in the hotel. Are the uh, gratuities included? Yes, yes. yes. Right. Now, if somebody treats you real good, you won't leave something. That's, but the, we do, the, the, your meal gratuities are included. They're all taken care of, you know, as well as the hotel maids. The luggage porters are all taken care of as well. So when they bring your luggage, unless you want to give them something, you can. But. Yes, ma'am. Um, Medicaid problem. If someone has a stroke, a spell, or something how does We just put them in a bag and leave them by the road. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, we, we have even medical people to be on this trip. We, and we were talking about that. Bill, Bill Robertson's an EMT. We have some people. We have therapists going on this trip and nurses. So we, you, you were going to. So <laughs> we got good people on this trip to be around. We have problems. But they are, you know, it's a modern world in, in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, everywhere. You know, we had somebody that left some medical stuff and we went straight to the pharmacy there and got it. And, you know, yeah. So it's. Uh, Yeah, they don't like you packing aerosol products in, but, you know, ask Kathy about that. <laughs> she just sticks in a suitcase anyway. You, you put it in a bag. Right. Like in a Walmart bag or something, if it goes off, it won't get all in your clothes. Okay. Because so most of the luggage part departments and airplanes now are pressurized. They, you know, like they pressurize the luggage departments, those kind of things now. Uh, do you take a shower? Yeah, if you have some water shoes, you can, or you can just take them up and take them up. It's just real slippery, so we help everybody. Once you, you kind of come down the stairwell, and there's like a ramp, you know, in that last one. But the rails, we just help people down the rails, and you know. <laughs> everybody gets down there. And we, we had some people I thought would never be able to get down there did last time, so, you know, everybody takes care of everybody. It's, it's good. Uh, what group I was talking with said they encourage people to go to the restroom when they get off the bus. Right. Right. Volume, instead of waiting when you get ready to leave, You're right. <laughs> we were that place was packed this last time, but we we it was crowded in there. But I think everybody got in, and got out without without a problem. But I would say go to the restroom first because that water is so ice cold. The first thing you want to do is go to the restroom. We put your foot in it, all right? Because it is cold. Anybody got a witness on that who went last night? That's cold water, amen. <laughs> But it's worth every, it's worth the adventure. They even, they'll offer it. Well, I bought one because it was so fun to watch. We baptized, like I say, 40 people. And uh, Gary will be helping me baptize this, this time and associate pastor. And Denny can baptize if he wants to get cold and wet. And because we're going to baptize him anyway. And so <laughs> we'll have people there to help and take care of it. But uh, it's, it was so fun. They do have a video that's running. Of course, they like to sell those out in the shop. And they'll come and ask who wants a video, uh, you know. That's probably one of the best things we brought back. We just sat back while people were coming to church the following Sunday and played it with people coming in. A lot of people knew our people in the service and got to see them getting baptized. Ten bucks, wasn't it? Something like that? Yeah. It's, it's, right. You will find out shopping. We'll give you time to shop at reasonable places. There's a lot of street vendors, you know, who's got everything to sell and they're cheap, you know. If you've got a lot of friends you don't want to spend a lot of money on, I'll point you to the right people, all right? They're street vendors. they got five hats for $20, that kind of stuff, say Jerusalem on them. So, you know, that's, that's, that's out there as well. Don't talk to the people get on the bus that you knew that had jewelry and stuff like that. Right. Like we we brought in one guy we've used every year who's who's who does like names in Hebrew and stuff like that. We'll just have him come to the hotel one night. He's going to give you a very reasonable price, you know, and he'll do the product right, you know. If he said you wanted to spell Peter in Hebrew, you know, you'll get that in Hebrew. It won't say dog or something. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
It'll, it'll say what it says, and they'll treat you right. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't take people places where the where the tour guide gets a cut and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's a, there's shopping we'll do in Bethlehem, which we go to the we'll go to the Church of Nativity there, and we'll, you know, Bethlehem's pretty much Arab controlled now. We'll have to go through the border wall to get into Bethlehem, and we'll we'll walk down into the Church of Nativity. We kind of park in a parking lot. It's a garage parking lot because there are. There are some Arab folks who don't like to see Jewish buses on the street, so they'll throw a rock at it. So we just park in a place about four blocks away and walk our group in, and never had a problem doing that. And then we'll get on the bus and go to a really nice, you'll get a real taste of, of, of you know, Arabic food at this restaurant. It's very edible, very good, you'll enjoy it. Uh, to me, it's some of my favorite food in the Middle East. It's Mediterranean. You got lots of vegetables and salads and stuff like that. You'll have a whole giant table of that kind of stuff. No bacon, uh, then no bacon in those Jewish hotels. They might have some turkey bacon, I don't know. But they'll have some kosher sausages, that kind of stuff, you know. But uh, the food is just incredible. You know, but you, you'll be able to, you'll have lots of pastries and lots of breads, and there'll be a whole island in the hotel of just different kinds of breads, and then another island of soups and salads, and another island of chicken dishes, and, you know, lots of Mediterranean stuff, and lots of fruit. So, like I say, you, you, won't, you won't hurt people. I don't know if I like that kind of, there'll be some food there you'll like. You know, say, well, I'm kind of a picky eater. There won't be a Wendy's, okay, or a Whataburger. <laughs> I think there's a McDonald's nearby, but you can find it if you need it. I hadn't thought about that. Yes. Now, we'll either do that depending on what's going on and what the times are and where, where the museums are open and stuff and what days are open. There's a new place they're called the Friends of Israel. And uh, it's a powerful place. And it's been open, I don't think, how many years now. But they go through, it, it talks about the state of Israel and how it was formed and all the people who made that possibility from, I mean, they go back and through the... 1920s, late 1800s, to Jewish people, to American citizens, to, to George Bush's senior's father, you know, who had a part in, I mean, it's amazing. And the way it is, they'll break us up into some groups, and you go stand around this little platform, and all of a sudden this holographic thing appears on it. Or there'll be this big wall, media full display of stuff, just telling the story of something. So you kind of move from place to place as you go through this as a group. It's, and then they have this one whole wall thing that's just mind-blowing. So... It's a really high technology kind of story of, of, the, of the state of Israel. So it'll be one of those two places that we go to. But if we don't, go, if we don't get one, we'll get the other. And you can always go back on free day and go to the other. Yeah. Yeah. The Yad Vashim is a, is, a, is a place that was always on the list. There it is. <laughs> I would say $20 a person per day for food and whatever you want to spend on gifts. On the street, a little cash for that. But if you're going to shop these shops, that's going to be credit cards. Even the guy we bring to the hotel about some gold stuff, he'll, he'll take a credit card. Soft drinks, soft drinks. Yeah, cough drinks and buck, you know, and two bucks at the most, you know. There'll be, we, we always have people get off, we'll get up and we'll drive over to, say, or, or boat over to Capernaum, you know, what? everybody's getting off the bus, they want to get something to drink, so we'll have the time that they have water. Or on the way back to the bus, you can, there's little places, stands, you can buy water, a juice, a soda, or something like that. So take some, you know, some money for that as well. But I say most of I wouldn't carry a lot of water cash unless you want to try to barter with cash. You know. I don't know what your, you know, your expenses are. Some people go and they know they have something in mind they've seen they want to buy. So uh, I know there's that place in Bethlehem. We go there. It's very tempting to spend some money. <laughs> they have these olive wood carvings that are, they got the cheap ones that are buck a piece, you know. You got Joshua and Caleb carrying the grapes into the promised land and stuff. Then they got a Joshua and Caleb about a thousand dollars because they're done by artists and they're really they weren't done on a lathe the machine is done by hand and it's just I, I don't buy it I just take a lot of pictures of it <laughs> but feel free to buy it if it's something big they will ship it to you and you will get it all right I've never had this shop do anything bad they're owned by it's one of the few Christian shops still in in Bethlehem the Arabs of the Muslims have just about run every Christian out and shut every church down in Bethlehem and these guys are just holding on but they're staying faithful Yes. No, we'll probably just do it at the garden, too. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they do it right, and they're honest people, and they'll make, 
And you can work with them, you know. You can work with them on the price, you know. Don't be, don't be afraid to. Yeah, don't be ridiculous, but, you know. <laughs> you know, try to bring them down point, some percentage points, you know. Uh, those are the kind of people to me that, that I want to support, though, you know, just because of the situation they're in. And, uh, but they stay true. They love the Lord. All right. Well, I'm sure you have other questions. Just email me. That keeps you, yeah, if you don't like carrying a lot of cash, some people just don't like to carry cash, they're really losing it or leaving it or something like that, you know, or dropping it out of their purse or stuff, credit cards work. I wouldn't take every credit card you owned either. I'd just take, you know, a credit card. There's always that temptation, not like going to Argentina or Venezuela or some of those countries where they're trying to get your pocket every second you turn around. But, you know, you always be safe. I like to carry my pocket stuff. If they're in an area like that, Susan will tell you. She'll say, okay, we're going to go in this area, and she'll tell you to zip your purse up or at least put it under your shoulder, you know, and put your pocket. So she's very good about giving some heads up about those kind of places if she thinks there's something like that going on. What, would, what should we expect in London for that extensive sale? In London, there'll be a big, like I said, a big lobby area waiting for gates. There'll be signs up telling when the flight ends what gate it's going to be at. So when you get down there, there's lots of shops. I mean, when we're coming back. Yeah, coming back. You'll have about four hours, whatever it is, between the flight. Yeah. So uh, you'll, you know... Me, I go find a place to lay down on the bed somewhere. But there's some really good restaurants, lots of shops, lots of souvenir places. I mean, a lot of them, from clothing stores to about every specialty shop you can think of. They're just surround this whole area, and they're down the hallways. And yeah. 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 And there'll be signs up everywhere that tell you your BA flat, whatever it is. You know, it's being called to a certain gate because they may start say it's going to be gate. 12B or whatever, and they may change it 30 minutes later. So just keep watching the gates. Um, will we get our tickets at the airport when we need to? Or not? You'll get a boarding pass, yeah. yeah. All they'll do, when you go up, they'll check you in according to, my, to our itinerary stuff. They'll, you match it, and they'll print you out a boarding pass and get on the plane. But I have all the ticket information. Basically, they do this by group numbers. Unless they bought their tickets. Unless you bought the ticket yourself, then you have your And they probably, I don't know if they sent you a ticket. You probably just got a receipt in a in a in a boarding number, you know, a ticket number they gave you, you'll, you'll check in, they'll give you a boarding pass. I, right. But you can just check in with us and we'll put you through the line as soon as you get there. I think we have eight people who went in and booked their own with the points and stuff like that. Uh, one of the best souvenirs that you'll bring back is the pictures that you take. And so we go to Houston, fantastic. I mean, you'll be just walking that street and you're going to look over to the right and you're going to freak out because you've got to see something that when you take a picture, keep this in mind, put someone that you know in the picture. That'll mean more to you later on as you look back over the trip. And so And don't be afraid to ask each other, hey, would you take a shot for me? Of course everybody knows how to do selfies, you know. You might take a selfie stick even, you know, you get that I carry one of those. Uh, there's one or two places only they'll do that, and it depends on what's going on. Every day, the travel agents get an update from Israeli security. Every day it goes on. When I, then I'll meet with her early in the morning. She sits down with me. We go over the itinerary. She says there's trouble here or somewhere across the fence last night. They saw footprints in the sand when they were doing the sweep the next morning or their electronic gates caught something. They weren't able to find out what it was. Then... All right, let's do this first. We'll do this till they clear that up, and we'll do that. So it's like it's it's extremely safe. And the big deal last year when we went, and, and I think Gary was with me when I asked the agent that, that works with us over this, says, why is it so crowded this year? It's ridiculous because it was extremely crowded. I've been at Eastern Christmas. That's what it's like, one of those crowds. And it shouldn't, this was November. I'm like, why is it crowded in November like this? He said, nobody wants to go to Paris, New York, or London. Why not? It's not safe. <laughs> So they're coming to Israel so they can be safe. <laughs> Whoever thought that would happen? But that's, they've done a good job of the security. So they got a wall. <laughs> Make Israel great again. <laughs> Let's start a political war before we get on the bus, all right? <laughs> all right, God bless you. Lots of questions. Shoot me a question, email, whatever. My phone number's on there as well. Try not to call me, you know, after late at night. I'm asleep. <laughs> God bless you. It's going to be a great time in the Lord.
Get your name tags. Bring them with you when you come to the airport. Put them on so we can get to know each other. Don't be afraid to invite each other to sit down for dinners and meals and stuff like that. They may have a hat. Yeah. <laughs>